For the Philippines, it's been a deadly combination. Grinding poverty and lots of guns have made serious crime a part of everyday life. And among the most common has been bank robbery. Until now. A few years ago, this man broke a big Manila bank robbing gang and took no prisoners. He and the men he led shot dead the 11 suspects in suspicious circumstances. It's for that incident that Panfilo Ping Laxon has earned the nickname Dirty Harry. We will go up to the level of responsibility, meaning it, can, it could uh, go as uh, high as station commander. So better be on your toes. Today we find Ping Laksong targeting his own troops, senior officers of the notoriously lazy and corrupt Philippines National Police. Little more than a national disgrace. Yeah, better take note and uh, jot down all these uh, offences. For years the police have been a big part of the problem, protecting organised crime like kidnapping and bank robbery, even at times running it. I believe that we cannot fight crime effectively if we have some policemen who themselves are involved in crimes or protecting crimes. So I'd rather do uh, house cleaning first. Mr. Sunabo, identify him and investigate. For housekeeping, read secret citywide surveillance of cops on the take. Strict new shape up or ship out disciplinary action. And it is the personal choice of the chief of the task force and the PNP to institute reforms and to purge all the inept, corrupt and undisciplined within the organization. I'd rather be feared than loved if I cannot be both, no? So that's my style. I don't care if uh, I, I uh, hurt my peers, even my classmates in the academy, never mind. For as long as I get uh, things done, for as long as I can accomplish my mission, then that's it. And Dirty Harry is getting things done. In fact, he's so can-do, the courtrooms have never been busier and the prisons are groaning with new inmates. Death Row is more like a gridlocked freeway with a staggering 1,300 prisoners, men, women, even children, awaiting their lethal injection. This is zero tolerance Filipino style, but not everyone's prepared to put up with it. They call it a homecoming. Officers, young and old, celebrating their graduation from the Philippines Military Academy. Many of the veterans here served when the army was simply the private force of Ferdinand Marcos. They were the sharp end of the late president's brutal intimidation. Among that suspect fraternity, General Panfilo Ping Laxon, graduate of the class of 71. Laxon was a tough and loyal foot soldier to Marcos. Now, reinvented as the country's boss cop, he hasn't forgotten his military code. What do you find you draw on from your experience in the military when you're now dealing well, with you, police? Well, you've seen the motto of the PMA. It's courage, integrity, loyalty. Mm -hmm. It's uh, imbibed in each uh, cadet, mm -hmm. you know, each graduate. Mm -hmm. it only a matter, it's only a matter of whether you forget all about these virtues when you go out, go out in the field or not. Like populist leaders the world over, President Joseph Estrada saw clear mileage in a robust crime crackdown. While Estrada claimed the political points, it was Dirty Harry who got the results even if it wasn't always pretty. Carrying guns can now court disaster, all in time for the evening news. If there's an armed aggression and you have to protect your life or even protect the lives of your companions, I told my people, given a choice between 
being hot in the news or being cold dead. Choose to be hot in the news. Dito tumama sa taxi. Dito. And if police statistics are to be believed, Dirty Harry's shoot first policing is working. In his first six months, petty crime is down 30%. Drug arrests up 97%, and once rampant kidnappers who terrorised the rich ethnic Chinese community have all but disappeared. He should be tough and against uh, hardened criminals. If you are soft with uh, hardened criminals, then what will happen to you? You will become ineffective. So total support from your community? We are all out in supporting uh, General Lakson. Like kidnapping, the heinous headline crimes of rape, armed robbery and murder are capital offences. Ping Lakson's crackdown is so successful, Manila's new Bilibid prison now houses one of the world's largest groups of condemned prisoners. Every day, that number grows. At exactly 5.45, the prison will be brought in here, inside this room. Into this cell here? Yeah. It's here death row prisoners take their last meal and make their last confession. It must be very difficult for them. Uh, maybe they uh, already accept their uh, destiny. Accept their fate. Yeah. yeah. Their last moments on earth are timed with cold uniformity. The prison's deputy governor witnesses all executions, which at this point can be stopped by only one thing. Uh, he will wait for the call only of the president of the Republic of the Philippines before he will be executed. Okay. Okay. In the absence of a presidential pardon, the prisoner is strapped in. The left arm punctured with the crude yet fatal drip. Anesthetic is used to relax the body before potassium chloride stops the heart. As the cocktail of chemicals courses through their veins, prisoners are invited to use their last four minutes to address the gallery of witnesses. Normally, the convict uh, says that uh, he is willing to accept what he's done, what he's done to his uh, victim. Abelardo's a lifer. He's been in this prison 15 years, but he would have been one of the dead had his murder conviction been delivered this year. If, as proponents claim, the death penalty is a deterrent, then this prisoner isn't hearing it from his fellow insiders. Support, too, from guards. Well, I'm in favour of the uh, abolition of the death penalty. Maybe, uh, in my mind, it, it is not a deterrent to criminality. With even prison officials doubtful, the church is finding new support for its belief that there's cause for pause. The age of the Inquisition is over, it says. In the third millennium, all life should be sacred. We have to fight for the life of the, each human being, even though that person is the worst among us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Here in this devoutly Catholic nation, the Church has a special authority. It fought against the reintroduction of the death penalty in 1994 and lost. God, we search the hearts of all, both the good and the wicked. Churchmen like Monsignor Ding Colonel have been arguing against it ever since, particularly when populist President Estrada refired the issue. Only now, the Monsignor is sensing a shift in public opinion. 
we are gaining some sympathy from from some senators and some some legislators are rethinking uh, those who were pro death penalty are now changing their minds a year ago everybody was uh, let's hang him let's implement the law let's use a sample but now well uh, the current uh, nobody's there is no hardline uh, pro death penalty legislator even the advocates of the crusade against by violence are rethinking their position the church has won a temporary concession from the government while the death penalty remains actual executions have been suspended for one year to mark the 2000th anniversary of the birth of christ Beyond broad arguments about the sanctity of life, principal to the church opposition is the enduring fear about the death penalty, that an innocent person will be executed. Mabuti lang kung nandiyan ka sa dito kung totoo ang ginawa mo yun, di ba? Hindi masakit. Pero yun, walang kaalam-alam. Malilital injection. Masakit siguro sa isang taong ganun. Every day, Eileen signs her young son into prison to see his father. Both petty criminals, when Eileen and Edgar met, they saw their chance at a family and a new life. Edgar got work in the church legal aid office. When one of his uncles was arrested on a murder charge, Edgar visited him to see if he could help. To his astonishment, Edgar was soon arrested on the same charge. Simulat sa Paul, mawawala man siya, yung magpapadevelop lang siya ng litrato. At saka alam ko kung saan siya pumupunta. At saka si Edgar, hindi kayang gawin ni Edgar yun. Sila yung dalawa ni, pa, ni Pax mayroon eh. Yan. It is perhaps the natural plea of a desperate young mother. But in this case, Edgar not only has an ally in the Catholic Church, but remarkably, an alibi. At the time of the killing, this man, lay preacher Brother Alfonso do Campo, claims Edgar was with him, playing guitar in a church prayer meeting. Is your family and friends? I know for a fact he was there. With you? Yes. At the time of the murder? At the time of the murder. He was with you? Yes. Because our novena start at 5.30 to 6, and the killing happened between 5 and 6, something like that. So he was very much there. Brother Alfonso believes Edgar was set up by the police anti-crime squad, the CIS, so they could close the case. And to do that, he says, they pressured a witness to nail Edgar. No, we don't question the fact that he really saw the killing. But what is questionable is he remembers the wrong people, pointing to the wrong people. I think and we believe that it was a CIS scripted crime, so he was coached, he was threatened, and even, I think, offered some money. And it seems Edgar's not the only one to suffer such a fate. I am personally convinced of at least four of the previous executions who were innocent. How many have been put to death? Uh, seven. Lawyer Tiro Tay is busy these days. A human rights campaigner, he often defends those like Edgar who claim to have been fingered by the state. The death sentence, he says, has been used by successive Filipino governments as a quick political fix, and innocent people are dying. The death penalty was the natural response to a clamor, supposedly, for, of the people for some impact statement on crime. The people are saying crime has to be stopped. Okay, I'll stop crime. I'll stop the criminals. I'll kill the criminals. What is cancerous in the community must be cut off. Uh, even the Lord said in the Gospel, uh, if your hands do not do well, cut it off. If your eyes becomes the source of your scandal, block it off. Just... 
While church leaders fight to save lives, there are dissenters in their ranks. Good morning. Once again, we bring you our Sunday TV Mass Live over RPN Channel 9. Father Sonny Ramirez may be a maverick, but his views are influential, broadcast live across the Philippines every Sunday. Their views he developed as the spiritual advisor to a girl who, at the tender age of eight, had been repeatedly raped by her father. Baby was a lonely girl. Nobody pays attention to, paid attention to her. And I saw in her a girl asking for help. And she was drowning because simply nobody just paid attention to her, her cries and her howls. And Lala. Baby Echegaroy embodies the nation's death row dilemma. By speaking out, she became the center of the nation's most infamous death row case. Kasi yung trial, parang, eto, hello, eto na naman, ikukwento mo yung nangyari sa yun, ang hirap-hirap, pinipilit mo na ang kalimutan. Pero kailangan mo itong gawin para mapaglaban mo yung karapatan mo. Kasi inisip ko kung hindi ako magsasalita, sino magsasalita para sa akin? Eh, sa akin nangyari yun. Hindi mo ang pwedeng nanay ko, hindi pwedeng kaibigan ko, hindi pwedeng si Captain. Hindi pwedeng yung mga tumulong sa akin. Kailangan ako yung magsasalita. So ang hirap-hirap, parang naghihilom na yung sugat. I uh, supported the uh, baby because I felt he was the most aggrieved, she was the most aggrieved one, and she represented the, the, the abused child. In the Philippines, so many children are abused. Nobody cries out foul. And now here's one kid who says foul. With her father, Leo Echegaroy's life at stake, many, including church leaders and even her own mother, worried about losing the family breadwinner, sided with the rapist. But Baby decided she had to speak out, and not just for herself. Well, sabi ko siyempre sa mga kabataan na ano, na huwag silang mahihiya kasi yung nangyari sa amin, hindi naman namin kagustuhan yun. Tsaka oras na para magsalita kami, hindi habang buhay magtatago sila sa kadiliman. Baby's testimony ensured her father was found guilty and in February last year, executed. Sorry, sana siya. Bibigyan siya ng another chance. Kaso hindi eh. Hanggang nung mamatay na siya, hindi pa rin siya, hindi niya pa rin inaamin. Tapos hindi pa siya nagsusorry sa akin. This person is a regressed soul. And I felt that uh, it was a stubborn soul. And uh, so with this kind of people going around, then others would just say, oh, it's, it's all right then. To, um, to abuse, uh, to rape your own child. She's a shy one. One year later, baby's been reconciled with her mother, but she now lives under the protection of the local community leader due to death threats from her dead father's angry relatives. They called, they called up the house and, uh, and advised me to back up or else. That's why I carry something in behind me. You got one with you now? <laughs> yeah. Show sure, us, what do you got? I have a... Uh, oh, right. What's that, a 45? No, this is a 9mm. 9mm. 9mm caliber. And All the I, time, huh? I also have my uh, backup ammunition. <laughs> yeah. Is that all the time? Yeah, I want... So look, looking after I girls... I have to protect. Is it, is it, is it dangerous business? Yes. Uh, imagine... Uh, you will send, if convicted, you will send the perpetrator or rapist to that chamber. Manila's tough streets have their own justice. Far from stemming violence, the death penalty is fueling it. Uh, there is abnormality in our country right now. No? Uh, you see a whole family massacre, uh, young, uh, a young boy, young girl stabbed 29 times. That's abnormal. Uh, so uh, we have to send a loud message to these uh, criminals that if they do something like this, they will uh, meet the or they will uh, uh, meet that penalty. 
when Leo Echegaray, the rapist, was uh, injected you know, lethally in, uh, in Muntinlupa. Uh, there was a uh, sore of uh, rape cases being reported to the police. Don't get me, don't get me wrong on this. You know, the statistics on rape, uh, you know, it uh, soared uh, higher than the previous years, only because people were encouraged to report uh, these kinds of, uh, of uh, cases now. While it may promote crime reporting, many believe simply killing criminals won't reduce crime. Death is not the solution to crime. Effective police work, less corrupt judges, better apprehensions, making sure that those apprehended are guilty and if they are guilty, they are put away. Hi, Adeline, how are you? I'm going to Brother Alfonso doesn't like bearing bad news, but today's message is one of the hardest he's ever had to deliver. Edgar's final appeal has been rejected. His execution is now affirmed. <laughs> Okay, trust in the Lord. The Lord will not abandon you. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, take care of your son. Okay, okay. God will not abandon you, try to, to be closer to him. But God, it seems, has abandoned them. As with most of the 1,345 death sentences, Edgar's execution falls outside the government's moratorium. Unless the death penalty is scrapped altogether, almost all will die, guilty or not.